Hallelujah and blessings in King Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Be Ye Holy Ministries, where holiness is a lifestyle. Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say with hearts of praise and joy, Hallelujah. What a wonderful God we serve. What a privilege to be in the family of the Lord Jesus. And I trust that you're walking not according to the flesh, but according to his spirit, when then there is no condemnation to us, his people. Well, friends, welcome back to our study on the book of James. And it is a joy and a delight to be with you again, to search the scriptures for truth truth for practical everyday living of us, his people here on this earth, in which we have been called to separate ourselves from. I trust that you are gaining much insight and wisdom from this study. And today we want to pick up in James chapter four, where we last left off, and we want to pick up in verse 11. Now, verse 11 is going to state what we've already addressed, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it, maybe just a little bit, but it says, speak not evil one of another. Now, this was specifically come to mind for me to be gossip, to speak evil behind others' backs, to speak evil to one another about someone else, especially those in our fellowship. And it says, speak not evil of one another. Brethren, sisters, he that speaks evil of his brothers and sisters and judges his brother speaks evil of the law and judges the law. Now, the law here is specifically the Torah, the law that was given to Moses. And it is the law that judges and the lawgiver that judges. We are not to judge. We are, we are to use the word of God as a presentation before others to invite them and encourage them, motivate and stimulate them to step up to a higher standard of that which the law affords us, that which the law calls us to. And so it says, do not judge your brothers and sisters, for if you judge, you are not a doer of the law, but you are a judge. Now there is one lawgiver who is able to save and destroy. Who art thou that judgest another? Now let's pause right there and let's, let's think about something because when I read this passage, it seems to be a contradiction. And if you're familiar with other parts of the New Testament, it should appear a contradiction to you as well. For instance, if you go to Matthew chapter 7, it seems to be James, Jesus' half-brother, seems to be in line with exactly what Jesus said. For look at Matthew chapter 7 verse 1. It says, judge not that you be not judged. Well, that's what James is saying. But the problem is, is we can't stop there. You see, Jesus continues and he says, for whatever judgment you judge, you will be judged. And what measure you meet, it will be measured to you. Now, why do you see the splinter that is in your brother's eye, but you do not consider the beam that is in your own eye? How do you say to your brother, let me help you get the splinter out of your eye, but behold, you have a beam in your own eye. You're a hypocrite. First, cast out the beam out of your own eye. Worry about yourself. Make sure that you're right, you're clean, you're living faithfully before the Lord, and then, notice that word then, then you will be able to see clearly to cast out the splinter out of your brother's eye. So Jesus is saying, if we're going to judge, we're to judge righteously. And that should bring to mind what Jesus actually said in John chapter 7 and verse 24. John chapter 7, verse 24. Jesus says, judge not according to the appearance of a person, but judge righteous judgment. Okay, so now again, it seems like we have a contradiction here. We're being told not to judge, but then we're being told to judge. Now, Paul echoes this in 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 12. 
He says, what have you to do in judging those who are without the fellowship? And if you read this in its context, you're going to see he's talking about the fellowship under Christ of brothers and sisters. And so he's saying, you don't have a right to judge those outside of the fellowship. They're doing what sinners do. They're sinning. But if you have someone inside the fellowship who is practicing a lifestyle of sin, look at the rest of the verse. Do not you judge them that are within? You have a right. You have a responsibility to hold those accountable to a higher standard within the fellowship. That's why Matthew chapter 18 tells us if you see your brother sin a sin, go to him. Tell him his sin. He may not be aware of it. If he repents in understanding that he has offended God, you've won your brother back. If he doesn't repent, this should be an indication that he's not a true believer. But let's give him every benefit of the doubt. So take two or three with you so that the person that you're rebuking in love is going to see that it isn't just a one-sided opinion from yourself, but there are others in agreement that whatever it is he's doing that's outside of the will of God, he needs to repent for. Well, if he repents, you've won your brother back. He's shown a heart of submission unto the Lord. But if he refuses and he's revealing a heart of rebellion, then you're to stand him up in front of the whole fellowship. If he doesn't repent then, you're to kick him out of the fellowship. And this is why a little leaven will destroy the whole lump. So let's go back to our text for a moment. And just a side note, that passage in Matthew 18 continues by saying, For whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven, and whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. If you forgive them, the Lord will forgive them. If you kick them out of the fellowship, he will kick them out of the heavenly fellowship, spiritual fellowship. And then one of the most misquoted verses in the Bible, for where two or more are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst of them. It has nothing to do with a small fellowship. It has to do with the fact that Jesus has passed his authority onto us to hold others accountable and they should look to us under the same submission as they would unto Jesus himself in submitting to him. That's what that passage means. Well, again, back to our, uh, our, our, our text, James chapter 4 and verse, uh, let's pick up again in verse 11. Do not speak evil of one another, brethren, for who, whoever speaks evil of his brother and sister judges his brother and sister. Now, the second thought that would come to mind, if this isn't a contradiction, then what is being used here for the word judge has to be different in each text. It has to be a different Greek word. But surprisingly enough, it's not. It's the same exact Greek word that Jesus uses in Matthew 7, 1, that Jesus uses in John 7, 24, that Paul uses in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, the latter verses there we quoted from, and that's being used here in the book of James. So if it's the same exact words, we have to go back to what Jesus said. It's our duty as followers of his to make sure that we are walking uprightly before him in every detail of our lives. And then we can help others attain the same goal, to step to the same high standard. Yet even in doing so, we must continue to realize and be transparent and honest with ourselves that there is still so much about us that is wrong. So it's all about the approach. When we approach someone, we're simply trying to help them. We're not thinking more highly of ourselves and less of them because there's no reason to think highly of ourselves for there is none good, no, not one. It is Jesus who is good. And the only good in us is the goodness that he's bestowed within us because now he resides within us. And that's what James is saying. It's all about the attitude. If you truly want to help others become more like Jesus, that's a wonderful mission. That's a wonderful goal to strive to attain to. But if you're simply trying to beat others up to show yourself as higher, as more worthy, then you're wrong in what you're doing. For there is only one lawgiver, there's only one who is just, there is only one who is good, 
There is only one who is righteous. There is only one who is sinless. And we know that that is Jesus of Nazareth. And it is he that is able to save. You can't save anyone. You can't change anyone's heart. Only Jesus can do that. So who are you that judges another, that thinks more highly of yourself than others? And so again, it's all about our motives. Do we desire from a heart of love and compassion to bring others along in their journey? Or are we harshly criticizing them for making the mistakes that babies are going to make, that you yourself made, that I have made? It's so easy to forget where we've come from, the journey we have taken, the mistakes we've made along the way. And we want to, and we expect from others such a high degree of excellence when we ourselves didn't show that same excellence. And so let us remember, let us remain humble, let us remain low and, and, and with, with attitudes of servitude in our hearts as we try to serve others, try to help others, we try to guide others, and we try to teach others. You see, that's the message of Jesus when he says, judge not, lest you be judged. It's all about the attitude of our hearts. What is our motive? What is our true desire? And that's why Jesus says, if your true desire, your true motive is one that comes from the heart of God, you're going to be as gentle as a dove in your approach. But like a dove, if they attack you, you're going to quickly flee. And that's why he says, do not cast your pearl before swine. Because if they're not truly seeking truth, then what began with good intentions to help another has now ended in argument, debate, disagreement, strife, anger, and discord between you and the one you're trying to help. And that's why Jesus says, if they exhibit these types of attitude, rebellion, and rejection to the truth, they have revealed by their very actions that they're not one of us. And so if they're not one of us, we're to separate ourselves from them. And if they're a part of the fellowship, then they should be removed from the fellowship. And this is known as church discipline, friends. And it's one of the most unexercised practices that should be a part of his fellowship, of his church, of his people. And the biggest reason for that today is it seems like nobody wants to offend anyone. But the word of God is offensive. It offends us and it will offend those that we communicate with. But if they have a true heart for God, if they are truly desiring to be the best followers of the Lord Jesus, they're going to welcome your rebuke because you're offering your rebuke in love with gentleness, kindness, and, and patience. You are seeking to be as articulate and slow to speak as you can in trying to communicate the message of the Lord as effectively as possible so that walls will not be created, but instead bridges will be built. Well, I love you, friends. I'm so thankful again that you're with us today. I pray that you're hungry for the things of God. I pray that you're hungry for the word of the Lord. And I pray that this word today has blessed your soul and caused you to desire to be more like him and less like you, to resist and turn from the world in which we live and to pursue God, his holiness, his righteousness, his glory with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Now, as he wills and until we meet again, friends, I truly love you. I'll see you on the next video. Thank <laughs> you.